So I made a quilt jacket and I'm going to show you how I did it and maybe you can make one too. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are in my jungle corner, but we're going to be talking about quilts, specifically quilted jackets because today I made one and I'm gonna tell you how maybe you can make one too. All right, so I have been wanting to make a quilt jacket for a really long time now and I've every time I go to Goodwill or thrift stores, I always look in the blankets to find quilts, but I have yet to find one. I don't know how all these people are finding these quilts in Goodwills. They're not here. I decided to give up on thrift stores and look on Facebook Marketplace. So I found, after a couple days of looking, I found one on Facebook Marketplace. It was $40, not too far from where I lived. So I decided, what the heck, let me just get my hands on it. Um, from the picture, it looked like decent. It wasn't the absolute favorite thing that I've ever seen, but I knew I could make it work. I went ahead and bought it and I brought it home and it looked so much prettier in person. So I'm really glad that I got it. I found out it's something called like a seed bag quilt or a feed quilt or something like that. So basically these seed companies used to make the sacks that their seeds came in with printed material so then people could use it again for fabric um, it was just a way of like being able to save money and reuse fabric so there's this like whole genre of quilts that are all these like feed bag quilts and this is one of them but it was absolutely nasty it was disgusting it was dirty it didn't look that dirty but i soaked it in the tub and the water was this disgusting brown yellow <laughs> so and I like rinsed it multiple times and it came out brown like every single time not every single time eventually it came out clear but it was gross so that was I'm I'm so glad I did that process and then after I soaked it and like rinsed it a couple times I at the end threw it in the wash just as like one last please be clean kind of effort all right, so once you find your quilt and you have cleaned it, please clean your quilts, okay? Especially if you're getting them secondhand, you don't know where they're coming from. Then you're ready to pick out your pattern and start making. So the pattern I used is this one right here. I think normally it runs for around $8, but almost every single time I look on it, look at it, it is on sale. Like I think I bought it for like three bucks or something. So. If you're willing to spend a couple dollars, this is a really, really great, easy pattern. And I always love being able to support small businesses. Um, but I understand that not everyone might be interested in spending for a pattern. So I did find a free pattern that is very similar to the pattern that I'm using. And I'm gonna link that below in the description. So if you're wanting to do a free pattern instead of buying a pattern, you can do that as well. That way everyone can make a quilted jacket no matter what you wanna buy or what you wanna spend. So I printed out my pattern and started putting her together. It's like a big puzzle piece. Um, I was able to cut out all the pieces and then pretty much from there I just am following the instructions and figuring her out. After I cut it out I kind of laid my quilt down and took the pattern pieces and laid it out kind of thinking like okay what parts of the quilt do I want to showcase in this jacket. Um, because there were some parts and some colors that they used that I didn't really care for and I didn't really think matched the the vibe of what I wanted or really matched the rest of the quilt. So I tried to piece it together in a way that would avoid those spots. And I think I, it was actually like a lot easier than I thought because my quilt was like a full size quilt. Now, if you have a twin size quilt, you depending on what size you're making, you might be a little less a little more or more limited to the variations you can do about where you're placing the pattern so it just kind of depends on the size of quilt that you have or that you're working with but once i found places that i thought would work i did the scary thing and started to cut through the quilt and make sure you have some good scissors for this i used like these one kind of cheap fabric scissors i have at first and they were having a hard, hard time getting through the thick fabric especially when anytime I cut on the fold because then you're going through like double the fabric so I ended up flipping to my other scissors that are a lot or are better well made um, and use those and those went through it a lot easier but just take your time um, now I want to keep in mind especially with the pattern that I'm using I used a size medium because I was thinking that would be like because I'm usually like a size small and I wasn't sure how this pattern was 
bill. Now it was not built to be oversized. If you're wanting like a jacket that's not skin tight, like double, go up at least two sizes. Like I should have done the large, if not the extra large. Um, and I can't remember if I filmed this later on, there might be a spot, but I did end up adding in panels after I cut it out to the arms and the sides because when I tried it on, it did not fit me. So keep that in mind when you're looking at your pattern, trying to decide what size to do. I recommend sizing up if you want more of that relaxed jacket fit. If you're already at the largest size and you're wanting to size up from there, it's super easy to add panels in on the sides and the arms. So don't feel like that you can't make your size um, because it's super, super easy to modify. Now that I'm done cutting it, uh, it's time to do the fun part and start sewing it together. So it's pretty simple from here. You just kind of sew the front to the back and sew the arms together and then sew the arm into the jacket. Um, it, yeah, it was like a really simple pattern. I did all of that and then I tried it on and that's when I realized, okay, I need to add these panels in. So I just like cut these little rectangles and then sewed it in like on the side over here and then the side over here and then on the arms. That way it was just an all bigger fit and that made it so much more comfortable and I was really happy with that fit. And also that meant I didn't have to like recut out the paper pattern to a bigger size. Now, the hardest part of doing a quilt jacket was probably like two things. One, figuring out the collar because the pattern that I used didn't come with the collar. So I ended up having to make one. I found a free Peter Pan collar online and I kind of just modified that to fit the jacket and it worked. But I don't know, I probably, like there were some of the measurements were like a little bit off, but like no one's gonna know except me. Um, but then the hardest part of the whole project is the bias tape. When you do a quilt, you're cutting through these layers and exposing the batting and you know all the different layers of the quilt. So you wanna finish the edges. You can't just do a normal hem on it because it's gonna to be too thick if you doubled it over. So you have to do bias tape. And guys, you can make your own bias tape, but it just takes such a long time. Like just go buy bias tape. It is not expensive. I found mine at a, um, secondhand craft store it's like a dollar for a package okay so just try to find some bias tape now if you want to make them go for it make it but just know it's gonna take a lot longer and I definitely did like the fast way of sewing bias tape when I really should have taken my time and made it even and done one side and then flipped it over and do the other side like there's tons of videos online that tell you the correct way to do bias tape and I have done that before with bias tape like I know how to sew the correct way with bias tape I just was in a rush and I did not do that so if you look really closely on the finished jacket the bias tape is definitely a little janky she's a little spicy um but that's just where I was I just was I wanted to get it done in one day and I did I did get it done in one day but the bias tape suffered because of it you know speaking of bias tape and finishing seams I meant to say this earlier but every time I when I sewed all the pieces together you're gonna have that inside exposed seam you have kind of two options here or three I guess you could do like the pretty the easiest thing, or not the easiest, but the most accessible thing would be like to do a zigzag stitch to somehow secure that. I have a serger, so I just buzzed it with my serger and it secured it really quickly. If you want something to really clean, you can use bias tape on the inside as well, or you can make a lining where basically you would cut out a separate jacket with a different fabric and then like sew that in to the pieces and create a lining. So a couple options. I think the easiest would be one, if you have a serger, serge it. But I know not everyone has one, so I would do a zigzag stitch um, or something like that. So make sure you are securing your seams. So we've got the bias type on and I had just had fun with the colors. I um, did like one color around like the main thing and I did like one color around the collar and then one color around the cuff. So depending on what kind of 
vibe you're going for, you can go crazy with the bias tape. And all the bias tape I got was secondhand. But then my favorite part was just adding all the little details. So obviously the bias tape is a big part of the details, but I have a newfound obsession with Rick wrap. Rick wrap. Rick rack. Rick rack. Rick rack. Rick rack. Rick rack. It's that zigzag stuff that you can put like so onto things. So I did it around the collar. I did it on the pockets. I had really fun with the pockets. Um, and I did it like above the sleeve. I really like doing all the finishing touches. So you could get creative. You could bead things on there if you want to bead things on there. You can make really cool pockets. I just did like simple front pockets, but the, op the options are limitless. Once you add all of your little details, the next step would be kind of figuring out how you want to secure it. A lot of people do buttons and I think that looks super cute. I have yet to figure out a way to get the buttonhole maker on my machine to work. I've tried it multiple times and I cannot get to work. Gonna work on that. So I have tried to avoid buttons. Now one thing you could do if you're afraid of like doing buttons, you can get sew on snaps and do the snaps, but then like sew on buttons on top to make it look like it's buttons and then snap it. I've considered doing that, but for this one, I just wanted something really simple. So I just ended up adding two little ties at the top so I could tie it into a bow. And I just thought that was a super cute feminine little touch that kept it secure but I still wanted the jacket to be able to be open. So it was more of like an accessory piece than like less like an actual, like, ooh, I'm cold, I'm wearing a jacket. Yeah, that's it. It like was really not that hard to make one, but it was such a fun process getting to puzzle piece it together and then figure out what is gonna add to it and decorate it with. And you could add lace if you wanted to, like that would be really cool. Um, so just have fun with it guys. Like find a quilt that makes you happy, that has colors in it and patterns in it that make you happy and then add things on it that make you happy. And then every time you wear it, you will be happy. That's it, that's the answer to life. Just wear quilted jackets that make you happy. Yeah, all right, here's my quilt. Like, here's my jacket, by the way. Like, she's beautiful. She is doing it. She is everything. Um, I can't wait to make another one. I do have another quilt. Maybe I'll give you like a little sneak peek of it. Okay, yeah, let's look at this. Okay, sneak peek of the quilt. What should I make with this? I mean, obviously a jacket, right? Right, another jacket, but like do it, do it better. I don't know, but I have this. I want to make more. They were so fun. And it seriously is like so comfortable to wear. And it's not so warm that I feel like it's kind of just like wearing, like it's just like wearing a sweater. Like you can wear it inside, but then it keeps you warm outside. I guess depending on where you live. I live in South Carolina, so it doesn't get too cold here, but I'm from Ohio. I would get cold. I would need a better jacket if I was still in Ohio. So yeah, this was like such a fun project. I absolutely loved it. Um, cannot wait to make more if you make one let me know um yeah guys thank you so much for watching this video if you haven't subscribed to my channel first of all what are you doing second of all apparently like 98 percent of you that are watching my video right now are not subscribed like what the heck come on just click the little button right it doesn't cost you anything it's free i mean maybe do it i mean you don't have to like no pressure but but even if you don't subscribe i highly recommend actually YouTube highly recommends that you watch this video right here. They have picked this video just for you and they think that you will really like it. So click on it and let me know if they were right. Bye guys.